I think the highest love, you can tell me if you agree with this or not, but the highest and best form of love would be to see somebody headed toward danger that's a really, really severe danger, and then to help turn them back, to persuade them that they're not going down the proper path. We do it in all sorts of different contexts. We do it for, we intervene with alcoholics, we intervene with people addicted to drugs, we intervene in all sorts of other situations. What if it's not quite as obvious? What if the problem that for which we need to intervene is not quite as obvious? What if it has to do with a sin that has actually deceived us quite a bit and that we are also being supported about by the surrounding culture. What if that? So I'd ask you to open up your minds a little bit to consider what the Word of God has to say. Because the Bible has a lot to say about the events of today, specifically in Proverbs chapter 16. Just to put this on for size, because a lot of people will think about stuff like Leviticus, or Exodus, or even if they're really, uh, they're really shrewd, they'll talk about Romans chapter 1 or 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'd like to talk about Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 is actually quoted on my shirt here behind my handy camera. And it has to do with the fact that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So that's what the Bible says, that pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit, a proud spirit before a fall. Have we stopped to think about what that means? That if we're subject to prideful thoughts and prideful sentiments, then that might mean that we would be putting ourselves up against what God wants. Because what if there's, think about it, what if there really is a God? What if? It's a good question, right? Just what if, what if I died right now, what would happen, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ, I believe Jesus, was a faithful witness of what God had to say. I think that Jesus knew what he was talking about. I would never presume to be like, you know what, Jesus, you're an idiot. Or, you know what, Jesus, I know better than you. Or, you know what, Jesus, you were just flat wrong. I think that we ought to do what Jesus said. I think that we ought to live like Jesus lived, and we ought to say the things that Jesus said. That's what I think. And I think that that stands up to reason. So here, what I, so here is what I think. I think that Jesus, when he said that go into all the world and preach the gospel of repentance to every creature, that consists of a message of turning away from sin and a message that he will forgive and reconcile sinners who repent to God the Father. That, I think, is the most important message that we could ever give anybody. Because to do the same, to do something different would be, in fact, to like set ourselves up as prideful against the message that God has delivered. Because, yeah, sure, in just a second. Jesus believed that the Old Testament was the Word of God. He also inspired the New Testament. All through the New Testament and through the Old Testament, there are numerous indications that, for example, God created marriage to be heterosexual and monogamous for life, and that he hates divorce, and that he hates premarital sex and extramarital sex like adultery. And God also hates homosexual acts as well. So for the same reason, God does not approve of these acts that many of us are approving. And that's a problem. It's not, I'm not here trying to say that I think I'm better than anybody. Because I don't think I am. I don't think I'm better than anybody. Hey man, come back and ask your question when you get a chance if you had a real one. Yeah, these are strong arguments here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Glad it wasn't mine. Yeah. I don't think they'd give it back to me if it were mine. Anyway, when Jesus said stuff like, in Matthew chapter 19, that when God created male and female, he made them male and female, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. That's like God's purpose and design in marriage. That's what sex is for. Sex is for all kinds of different things. But God created it in a specific way. And so when we take anything, it doesn't matter what it is, when we take anything that God made, and then we use it in such a way that goes against his created design, his communicated design, then doesn't that make us prideful? Doesn't that mean that we put ourselves over and against what God has said? Doesn't it mean that we are arrogant against our Creator? Doesn't it mean that we think we know better than God? Friends, I'd ask you to consider that. So there's all these different people shouting all kinds of nonsense. I would just like to ask anybody who's got a mind that's open. Maybe somebody out here has got a mind who's open to willing to listen. And I would encourage you to read the New Testament. I would encourage you to read the Old Testament. I would encourage you to listen to dissenting points of view, which is what I've been doing all day. 
However, most people here have not been listening to dissenting points of view. Instead, they try to shout over me, which is why I tried to bring the bullhorn. That's good. Yeah, see, so you're like a bunch of cuss words, and that's supposed to communicate something to me, I guess. Anyway, but I still love everybody here. And of course, I don't matter. Like, I could be the worst person or the worst hypocrite in the world. And it wouldn't change whether my message is true or whether my message is false. Friends, I truly believe that many of you have been mistreated by Christians in the past. I truly believe that there's a lot of like a lot of people here who have been abused, who have been treated bad by, by other Christians or by church people. And I'm not trying to say that's like why you're gay or whatever. I'm just trying to say that that's like that might be a cause, like one root of bitterness inside your heart. And I just want to say that I'm sorry for that. I just want to say that whatever those other church people did to you, I'm really sorry to hear about it. And I genuinely believe like those testimonies. I believe that like the Baptists are hypocrites. I believe that the Presbyterians are a bunch of jerks. I believe that like your parents or your grandparents or your teacher or your pastor like did terrible things to you. For whoever has that testimony, like I believe you because I don't really hold the churches of this area in high esteem. But instead, Jesus Christ is the one that I'm here to preach, not churches and not men. I'm not here to talk about like men. I'm not here to talk about uh, like changing your behavior. What I'm talking about is seeking, well, here's why. I'm here to talk about forgiveness of sin reconciliation with God the Father through Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ knew that all of us have sinned. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory, literally everybody. I myself included, most certainly. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The payment that we receive for sin is death. It's hell. That's right, that's what I've said. I just, if you listen, that's what I just said. If you listen, that's what I just said. And so God knew that all of sin, God bless you, in Jesus' name, God bless you. God knew that all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And he did not want people, he did not want everybody to go to hell. He didn't want anybody to go to hell, as a matter of fact. Which is why Jesus Christ came to earth. Jesus Christ is God himself in human flesh. And he took on human flesh so that he could live a perfect life. And he could obey all of God's laws in the way that I've never obeyed God's law. I have never been perfect, and I've never perfectly obeyed God's law, and neither of you. We're all guilty before God, because we have committed acts against God's law. And so for that reason, Jesus came to this earth, and he gave himself over voluntarily and deliberately to death on the cross. God bless you. God loves you very much. God loves you very much, too. God loves all of you very much. At the same time, he's also angry with those who spit in God's face. And I just want to encourage all of you because the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry and wrathful against the wicked every day. And I don't want that for you guys. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to undergo the wrath of God. I don't want you to be full of like envy. I don't want you to be full of hatred and bitterness in your heart. I want you to have peace in your heart. I want you to have love in your heart. Jesus Christ can give you love in your heart. Jesus can set you free from your sin. Jesus Christ, I love you too. If you loved me, you probably wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. I think you're a hypocrite. Anyway, the Bible says, Jesus actually said in Luke chapter 12, that hypocrisy is the leaven of the Pharisees. So here's something I'd like to ask all of you to consider. That are you being hypocritical in the way that you're judging? Are you being hypocritical in the way that you say? I know, I think judging's okay. But many of you, well then why are you judging me? See, hypocrisy, hypocrisy is exactly that. Hypocrisy is saying, please don't touch my stuff, buddy. Hypocrisy is saying, well, I'm on public property, okay? So anyway, hypocrisy is to say one thing and then do the exact opposite of that thing. So when you say, hey, please don't judge me or whatever, or don't judge us, like that's judging me for judging you. And Jesus said that hypocrisy is the leaven of the Pharisees. Okay, so for that reason, like God does not want us to live in a, a hypocritical way of lifestyle. Jesus Christ can forgive even your hypocrisy. Just like he forgave Pharisees, Jesus forgave fornicators, Jesus has forgiven many homosexual people, he's forgiven me, a bitter, blasphemous, uh, cowardly person. And I want him to forgive you too. I want you to know the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ can love you. Jesus Christ loves you very much and he wants to set you free from your sin. Jesus Christ wants to give you forgiveness of your sin. Reconciliation with God. Jesus wants to set you free from your sin. You can be set free from your hypocrisy. And from the hatred in your heart. 
there's a lot of hatred in your heart. And you can sit here and be like, I love you, but you're lying. You don't love me. See, exactly. So you think that I'm a terrible person, and so for that reason you hate me. But God loves you despite your hatred, despite the terribleness. But I love you. And you've mistreated me, but I love you. In Jesus' name, and Jesus loves you too. And Jesus will give you his grace if you will just turn your back on your sin today. Don't no longer continue walking the path that leads to death, friends. It's going to lead you to hell. It's going to lead you to condemnation. But you don't have to live in condemnation. You can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you'll repent and turn your back on your sin, place your faith in Jesus Christ. Turn your back on your way of living that leads to death, friends. Turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. What did they send about? I mean, the only the only thing I know for sure is two things. For example, uh, one that they're hypocritical, and two that they're celebrating uh, a, thing, a perversion that God hates here at this parade event. Other than that, I wouldn't like presume. Uh, because they say stuff like "don't judge," which is a judgment against me. For example, that's just one example, but there's, there's several other ones. And God, Jesus really thought that hip hypocrisy was really bad. Like, are you, have you ever read much of the Gospels or whatever? Yeah, I used to be Methodist. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so did I. How about that? So you remember the Pharisees, like the bad guys of the story? Yeah, I remember Yeah. Yeah, so Jesus says that, like, uh, Jesus said that hypocrisy is what the Pharisees do. It's like their, it's like their trademark. So anyway, that's that's why I said that. Yeah. Long story short, though, can you please explain to me exactly who wrote it and why you believe in it? Who wrote what? The Bible. Well, a lot of several different authors uh, wrote it, and I believe it. So can I mean, you name them? what's up? Can you name them? Um, yeah, given enough time, I mean Moses, Joshua, Samuel, okay. you know, Korah. Uh, not, not Korah, sorry, yeah, some others. Yeah. Where's the cold heart proof that it's heaven and hell is real? Where's the proof? Yeah. Uh, Jesus said he was. Okay, now how do we have that documented in facts? In the Bible. Okay, it's in the Bible, but the Bible was also written by people that was unknown. Are you saying that um, when people, so an unknown person writes something, it can't be true? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying it can't okay. be true. I'm, saying, I'm, saying I'm not saying it can't be true. Oh, by okay. the way, what part of our lifestyle offends you? Is it the way I wipe my ass every day? Because I wipe my ass the same as you every day. Are you, I wash my hair the same way every day. Are you like day. trying to, are you I, trying to reason with me or are you I just see, trying to express I hatred masturbate. in your heart? I masturbate. I masturbate just like you. Wow, that's great. Tell me more. I don't have sex with other people okay. unless I want to. It's consensual. Yeah. God said nothing about that. Yeah, he does. So tell me what part is bothering you. Uh, sexual immorality will lead you to I'm hell. Sorry, what, what part of my sexual immorality? What part is no, any you? any sexual immorality will lead what anybody to hell. You? Oh, oh, no, it doesn't. It's it not when, that it offends me. It's that I love you. When a woman touches my body, that offends you. No, it's not. It's a. I'm not offended. It said. It said I love you, and I don't want you to go to hell. Why would I go to hell for another woman? For your sin. Am I going to go to hell for the man that For your sin. Wait, is the man that raped me going to go no, to hell for touching my body? Yes. What about he repents? my body? Yes, if a man rapes you, that's sin. Am I going to go to bed? Go to jail? Am I going to go to hell for that? Yes. For, for what? Somebody attacking you and being a victim? My body. No, it'll be for your own sin, not for being victimized. Not for being victimized. Right? Why would you say? Why would you? Why would you ask me whether you're being victimized or contributing to go to hell? Because I don't want you to go to hell. What difference does it make to you, though? Because God, God you made even sex know for a reason. fact that people go to hell for that. God made you're sex for a reason. You're just making that shit up, and you come out here with your fucking side. Well, I, I mean, I get it from I get it from the Bible, so. You got it from the Bible. Yeah. Where's your Bible at? It's in my bag. It is. Pull it out. Let's see it. Let's see the words. What do you want to see? I want to see where it says it's wrong. That what's wrong? Whatever it is that you're out here protesting, my dear. Well, I'm not really protesting anything. I'm mostly talking about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Oh, well, you know, Jesus loves all these people right here because they that's all true. love their sin. However, however, they are also under God's wrath because they love their sin. And that's what I, I'm trying to persuade people to turn back from that. I have one major question. Let's do this. Hey, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, do you mean pork? Yeah, if you could not touch me, that'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah. Do you mean pork? Yes. Um, do you wear, like, mitch mash, like, yes. fabric? Yes. So, how are you not living in, like, the same lifestyle that we are? Why is being gay, this, like, any different? Because in the Bible, it said God doesn't differentiate between sin. So, how is that any different? It's, it, it does Why is it that we're repulsive and disgusting, but you can do the exact, like, you can make sin too, and God sin doesn't differentiate. Where, did you, where does it say that? What that, all it? Sins, that all sins are the same. Where does it oh, let me just... Sure, good, good luck, because it's not there. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, I just, I just wanted to let you know, thank you, because out of your homophobia, 
I'm not scared of you. I love you. I'm not scared of you at all. Why are you like preaching how like? Because I don't want you to go to hell. You don't want me to go to hell. That's correct. I love you. Because I'm attracted to judging. No, because because all of sin. It's a sin. It's a sin. Not to be attracted to not to be attracted to women, no, but to have sex with women, yes, that would be sin. To have sex with women. Yes. Yes, but everybody is a sinner. So having sex with a man would be a sinner. If you were, if you were married to him. But I can't. Um, that's what God said. Well, that's what God said. That's what God said. Oh, no, you don't. Have you talked to God? Yeah, I read the Bible. It's in there. I don't know. That doesn't sound like talking to him. Yeah, what about James? Could you please give me two things? Yeah, but what about James? Can you talk about James 2.10? Sure. Yeah, that definitely says, for whoever shall keep the whole law and get abandoned one point, he is guilty of all. Right, that's, that's not what you said. Because you said, you suggested that all sin was of equal gravity and severity, which is not the case. However, it is true that any one sin, no matter its gravity or severity, suffices to send somebody to hell and to make us guilty. So I'm, I agree with you on that. Like, any one sin will send us to hell. The problem here is not that, like... Okay, but how is it any different being a Christian and being gay and repentant than being a Christian and living in a life of sin? Because I know for a damn fact that you are not living a perfect life. So how would yeah, it be different? So how would it be different? Why is she going to hell for liking her? Well, do you, uh, do you love Jesus? Yeah, I was saying when I was 16, I was baptized when I was 16, and I thought God in my body, and I thought the Lord why are you uh, Why are you here at a gay pride event wearing a uh, rainbow eyes? Uh, because I love myself and I love my people, and God loves us. That's yeah. why. If uh, If you were born again, you would not love yourself. You would consider. You would deny yourself. No, I do love myself. Well, oh, you shouldn't. It took me a long time to yeah. love myself. You shouldn't. You should hate yourself. I should hate myself. Yes. That's a great. Thing. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, "If a man does not deny himself, he cannot be my disciple." It is not my job to decide what all of these people should. And that's not what the Bible says. Okay, that's great. Okay. I think it is so you don't believe the Bible. Yeah, you're not you're not born again. You're sadly deceived. I think it would be great if everyone on this world could live a happy life and we're not gonna live a happy life by hating ourselves. Hating ourselves is what called you try to make deceived. everybody. You're deceived. No. You need Jesus Christ. I do have Jesus Christ and because of not if you love yourself. I tried killing myself three times because I hated myself and then no. I learned to love myself. You loved your you love yourself so much that you selfishly attempted no. to, to kill yourself. I love yourself. myself now. Jesus Christ will set you free from yourself. And he did. And he will set you free. Anyway, did you have a question?